Hey there YouTube, this video is meant for a blog post on my website. A link to my post will be under the link section in the description box below if you're viewing this on YouTube. Now if you visit the post and it says the post is not completed yet, just wait an hour or two, maybe even less, and it will be up. Heck, it might even be up in the next 30 minutes, it might even be up by the time this video is up. Now late in the evening of April 13, 2019, early in the day for April 14th in UTC, the second largest earthquake since the eruptive activity calmed in August of 2018 struck the Big Island of Hawaii. Almost 2,000 people reported feeling this earthquake within hours, and reports say that it lasted quite long. Although recent volcanic activity has plagued the south-southeast section of Hawaii at the Kilauea Summit, Pu'o'o, and the Lower East Rift Zone, this recent earthquake struck just to the northeast of Hualalai Volcano, as you can see right here, which resides in northwest Hawaii. This volcano has not erupted since the 1800s, but this recent earthquake, reportedly a magnitude 5.3 at 13.2 kilometers in depth, suggests that something could be changing under this recently quiet volcano. Now, seismicity was extremely calm for a few days prior to this magnitude 5.3. All of a sudden, it struck, as you can see here, and just hours later, a deep, long-period, high-frequency tremor-like event struck deep to the far to the south, excuse me, near Pahala, Hawaii a location that has been notorious for DLPHF events as of late. It is interesting to note that these DLPHF events, as I like to call them, have not been seen for many days, possibly maybe about a week or so. But once the magnitude 5.3 struck, as you can see here, this event occurred as well, just hours later, but in a completely different location. Could they be related? I think it's highly likely, but you never know. Now this video is simply for my blog post on my website about these two events. In this video, I will show the seismic audio to the magnitude 5.3 and also the audio to the deep long period high frequency tremor like event, which I've talked about many times before. Seismic audio is generated via the Iris Time Series URL builder, link in the description box below under resources. This tool is amazing and allows any user to generate seismic audio from data obtained directly from the seismic instruments. I love seismic audio and I feel it is best that you use your headphones. However, please be careful, it might get loud at times and it can be very sudden. The following audio is of the magnitude 5.3 earthquake. The audio was taken from seismic station WAID in the HV network, which is somewhat close to the epicenter. The earthquake occurs suddenly and the tiny cracking and popping that you hear afterwards are aftershocks. The data you are about to hear is one hour of seismic data compressed into 36 seconds. So that was the seismic audio to the magnitude 5.3 earthquake from one of the closest stations. Now the following audio you were about to hear was taken from seismic station PPLD and is of the deep long period high frequency tremor like event which struck 6 hours after the magnitude 5.3. This DLPHF event struck just south of Pahala, Hawaii around 40 kilometers to 38 kilometers in depth. HVO is reporting only three events for this one DLP HF event. According to the data, it seems the tremor-like event got slightly stronger and slightly more shallow with time. I have reported on these before and you can see some of the data on these on my blog post and other posts on my Hawaii blog on my website, which resides under the seismic events drop down menu. But the link to my website is of course in the description box below right under my email address. The audio you are about to hear is of the DLPHF event shown right here, which occurred about six hours or so after the magnitude 5.3. And it is one hour and 10 minutes of seismic data compressed into 42 seconds.
So that was of the DOPHF event. Very interesting, huh? Now, last but certainly not least is the magnitude 4.0 in Utah. This magnitude 4.0 at 3.8 kilometers in depth struck very, very far from Hawaii. Obviously, yes but struck only 50 minutes or so after the magnitude 5.3 in Hawaii. Now, I'm not saying they are connected, but seismicity has been somewhat low for both locations. Then, all of a sudden, we see some larger seismicity right around the same time. Maybe it is just a coincidence, but in this strange world, you never know. It is my wholehearted belief that this earthquake you see here, I have labeled multiple things on here, including the 4.0, was volcanic in nature. I am doing a second blog post dedicated to this magnitude 4.0, which struck amongst a large volcanic field in Utah. Now, there will be more info about this in the blog post. Again, a link will be provided in the description box below. However, if the post says it is not done yet, do not fret. It will be finished very, very soon. Don't you worry. It might even be finished by the time this video gets up, but just in case, I'm just letting you guys know. It'll be finished very soon if it's not. The following seismic audio was retrieved from seismic station TCRU in the UU network, which I believe was the closest seismic station to this event. This is one hour's worth of data compressed into 27 seconds of audio. Check it out. So that was pretty interesting, guys. Now let's hear just the earthquake itself slowed down just a bit. This is still from the same station, TCRU, and is five minutes worth of data compressed into about three seconds of audio. I will play it four times since the audio clip is quite short. So here is the magnitude 4.0 at 3.8 kilometers in depth that struck in Utah within a well-known volcanic field. Was this magma itself, hydrothermal fluids, or tectonic activity? You be the judge, but according to the data, I do personally believe this was a volcanic earthquake. 